and good day to everyone. I'm Muhammad Azri Muhammad Marikan. Today I'm going to present regarding our sickle setter experience on minimally invasive coronary artery bypass grafting, MICICABG on pump arrested heart in Cardiotrasi Department Hospital Pulau Pinang. My supervisor is Mr. Abu Yamin and Datuk Bashir. Since the introduction of conventional CABG more than 50 years ago, approach by median stenotomy has been the gold standard, which can be considered as invasive. MICICABG eliminates the invasiveness of the stenotomy, and it is a procedure that takes the advantage of a confined area of interest, which is the left internal mammary artery, lima, the target coronary arteries and the apex of the heart, and the ascending aorta for proximal anastomosis. In 2009, McGinn et al. has shown that MICICABG can allow a similar revascularization configuration as conventional CABG, and the usage of cardiopulmonary bypass and arrested heart give the advantage of complete revascularization, which will improve the long term graft patency and preserving its durability. In the center, we have selected 10 suitable patients to undergo this procedure from June until August this year. The findings were compared with a 10 match group of patients undergoing conventional CABG. Same as indications for conventional CABG. However, given the relatively new procedure in our center, we have excluded patients that require emergency CABG with hemodynamic compromise, patients with severe pulmonary disease, morbidly obese patients, and severe left ventricular dysfunction. showed that most of our patients are at the age of 50s, all male with good left ventricular function with the ejection fraction of about 50%. 90% of them has three vessel disease. The patient characteristics are quite similar to the comparison group that underwent conventional CABG. We do it. All patients that underwent MICS CABG has femoral cannulation for cardiopulmonary bypass. Incision is made at the left fifth intercostal space at the anterior chest wall. The lima is harvested in a particle fashion to graft the LAD, while the saphenous vein graft or the radial artery is used to graft the other targeted coronaries. The proximal anastomosis is hand sewn on the ascending aorta using single cross clamp method. Features of the layout of our procedure. Our results showed that the number of graphs is slightly less compared to our conventional CABG. The bypass time is longer and the LT cross clamp time is also longer. This can be attributed to early adoption of skills to perform the procedure. Even so, we have no conversion to sonotomy, we have no re-intervention for bleeding, and there is no perioperative mortality in all 10 patients that we have operated so far. Operatively, our patients experience slightly lower pain score compared to conventional CABG. On average, MICICABG patients went home post-operatively two days earlier than conventional CABG. The advantage of MICICABG can be seen in terms of time to return to full physical activity which occurred at median of 12 days. With all of you, the CTA coronary is three months post-op of our first patient that underwent MICS-CABG on pump arrested heart. As you can see from this 3D reconstruction image, the graph configuration is similar to conventional CABG. Showed that the lima to LED graph is fatal in three months post-op. Just showed that the SVG to PDA and the radial artery to OM graph is also patent. In general, this procedure is safe and feasible to be done in any cardiac centers. MICABG allows for a graph configuration that is anatomically similar to conventional CABG. It also has a faster post operative physical recovery, as evidenced by shorter hospital stay and faster return to full physical activity. Control is better as we utilize only a small incision. However, it has a significantly longer aortic cross clamp time 
which can be attributed a single cross claim method for proximal anastomosis. Since it is a relatively new technique for our center, it requires selected patients with lower risk given it is technically challenging procedure and has a steep learning curve. The expectations of our study is that this report is an observational study in a small number of cohorts in a single center. Selection bias of patients is likely due to the inherent technical difficulties. The ability of the procedure is still unknown because of an ongoing follow-up and long-term patency remains to be systematically investigated and reported. MICSA-ABG on pump arrested heart has excellent short-term outcomes in terms of shorter hospital length of stay, has improved pain score and a faster post-operative recovery. It is feasible and practical to be done by all cardiac surgeons on selected patients.